I am here with Will Ackerman and Jeff Oster of the band Flow, but we also know them individually. Will Ackerman, born in Palo Alto, California, got to New England thanks to attending Northfield Mount Hermon School in Western Mass. I think he liked the area that eventually he relocated here after finding Wyndham Hill Records. I say hello to you, sir. Welcome, Will. Nice to have you. Ian, it's early. <laughs> Thank you very much. Delighted to be here. And Jeff, nice to meet you. Welcome. Yes, sir. You guys you have, you have a show coming up this Wednesday, Next Stage Arts, I believe at uh, 7.30 showtime. A phenomenal venue. I don't need to tell you guys about Next Stage Arts. What, what a great place to uh, create a, a live setting and very conducive to... Uh, a crowd watching some great music that you guys will provide Wednesday night again next stage arts in Putney so before we talk about how flow got together can we talk about you guys individually just a little bit well did you grow to love the area after attending uh, Northfield Mount Hermon yeah it's a long long story um, but basically I was a kid very much in need of a home and uh, I had a girlfriend who um, took me up to Wyndham Hill Farm you and Mary Folsom owned that inn. It's obviously now still very much in, in business. Relay and Chateau Hotel now. Um, but basically speaking, I was really, really a lost kid. And you and Mary, Mary Folsom took me in as, as one of their adopted kids in a way. I mean, I, I never, it was never formal, but it was about, I found a home there. And, and I think really that did more for my life than anything I can imagine. So everything that I, I, I treasured Wyndham Hill Builders was my first company, a general contracting company, and then Wyndham Hill Records and so on. So everything that really mattered to me, I named Wyndham Hill. And has uh, you, it seems like you, you went to school here, you moved back to California, and then you came back east again. So did you bounce back and forth a little bit? Well, I, uh, yeah, uh, Stanford was free, um, so I went there. Uh, my father was the head of the English department, um, so I got a free ride out of that. Uh, I came within five units of graduating and walked away. Um, I think I realized that uh, if, if I did finish those last five degrees, which was my father's Chaucer course, by the way, um, that I would be in lockstep with the assumption that I would have been a, an English professor. Um, I had decided that I loved the smell of lumber, um, and I became a general contractor. My first company was Wyndham Hill Builders. Um, and we were doing some pretty high-end stuff, built houses for Dave and Lucille Packard at Sea Ranch and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so my first thing, leaving Stanford, was to become a general contractor. Um, and then uh, I fell off a roof, and I had to start something else for a while, and I started playing more guitar. Anyway, uh, a, a strange and circuitous route, but it got me there. Jeff, did you ever thank Will for falling off a roof? Well, thus, I, thus creating the situation where you folks are now. I actually should. Well, I actually kept him in one place, you know, <laughs> so at least I could catch up with him then, you know, because I wasn't going to be following him up onto the roof myself <laughs> with uh, a construction belt or hammer or anything like that. But, How did uh, you find yourself in New England and Vermont specifically, Jeff? Well, years ago growing up, I, I lived all over the country, and for about six years I was in uh, Rhode Island and, and, and Framingham, Massachusetts. And it was sort of a formative time, maybe 11, 12, 13 years old, summers in Nantucket. My dad had a job down there. And, and the whole New England vibe is um, something I've always loved. And then as it turned out, one of my best friends, my oldest friend actually from Miami, lives up in Chester. And I used to go visit him quite a bit. And then after a while, I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I always wanted a cabin in the woods, and we were looking around, and he had look at, looked at some houses, and I ended up getting it one back in 1993. So I've been up here, you know, visiting and staying at my place every once in a while, uh, as much as I possibly can from the West Coast uh, since then, and I just love it here. So you're a Vermonter. Well, I know you, uh, you're not going to say that, well, Jeff. You, know, you may not want to admit it, Jeff. Well, they'll look at me and they'll say you're you, you could live here for thirty years and still be from away. You know, you'd still be a flatlander. So. That's true. There's always that. Had you two, and I apologize for not knowing, before starting the band Flow, I assume your paths have crossed prior to forming this band. Yeah, I mean, I, I produced uh, Jeff Oster's music, um, and this whole notion of flow, I mean, I'm not even quite sure how that happened. I mean, it was going to be the three of you, yeah. Lawrence and Fiona, and somehow or other it went from FLO to FLOW. I know, that's right, exactly. Right. I like it. I like the name. It looks good on a marquee, there and probably go. a drum, drum riser as well, right? There you go. 
Um, your album received the New Age Album of the Year at the 16th Annual Independent Music Awards show. How heady was that for you guys? Were you both in attendance there? Did you find out about this through other channels? Or I was there, yeah. Will, Will tends to do the production and somebody has to be the person that goes out and talks about it, so that's usually me. So I was down in New York for that. and That was great. You, find, you, know, you find out about it at the actual award show itself. And um, it, the recognition that this man has had has been really quite gratifying. And, and, and we, you know, we have this new album, enough so that we've come and done another one. And you know, that's, this whole uh, uh, rollout now is going to be all about that, all the shows that we're about to do. And it's, it's really great. And, and it's been magical. I mean, you know, the thing with Will, I, I, you know, I'm sort of one of those, I'm like a fanboy. I mean, from like 1979 when I first heard, you know, It Takes a Year, I spent years at my house playing my horn along with this guy's records. And, and I don't think I ever heard that You story. didn't hear this? Oh my God. Yeah. For years, I would listen. How cool is that? Listen to his music, and I would sit in my house hey, and play I my. Hey, a royalty. Horn. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, okay. Well, I didn't record. And then finally, I was, I was, I, you know, I've, I have a, a whole day job life, and I was sitting in my cube one day, and I had these songs up on MP3.com, and it was getting all this airplay, or you know, back then in whatever it was like, 2001, 2002, and then I just went to Wyndham Hill's website, thinking, well, I'm just gonna find some way to share this music that I'm having this success with that I made. And, uh, and Wyndham Hill at that time and wasn't even an active label. They were like reissues and I think Jim Brickman was the only guy that was uh, on there. And then it, I went over to Will's website and I sent an email just to Will. I said, hey, you know, I've been listening to your music for however, you know, my whole life and you know, you've been the soundtrack of so many things. And he wrote back and he goes, so what are you looking for in having me produce your music? Ask me this straight ahead question, so I write back, you know, I well, I've got these songs and they're really popular, and you know, would you do that? And he goes, well, well, what is it that you really like? And I said, well, I'd like you to produce my music, and then you know, it, it turns out that you know, I have had this cabin I bought in like 1993, and this was like two, ten years later. It's about 45 minutes north of where his place is. So I came up on a, on a on a summer afternoon, and I brought my little CD, and we sat on his porch talking about how awful the music business was, <laughs> and had a glass of iced tea, and I gave him the CD, and I drove back to Boston. And I look at my little email, he goes, he actually listened to it, and he goes, well, your stuff is actually good, yeah. which was kind of cool. You, know? you so seem so, surprised so, that he would say that. I, I absolutely was. And then, you know, it was like, really, literally, it started off as this whole fanboy thing. You know, like Will Ackerman, you know, but now it's, you know, he's... Now he's just a pain. Yeah, yeah, ask well, me to go yeah, please. speak at award shows yeah, and well, stuff that like kind that. Of stuff. Right. I do now, right, exactly. How bad? I had a yeah, if there's anybody who knows how really mundane I am, <laughs> it's you. Yeah, yes, sure. exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, here is one of the worst questions I could uh, ask both of you gentlemen. Can you describe what is the music of flow? What is it? How would you describe it? No. no. <laughs> um, but we'll try. Yeah, we'll try. <laughs> you first. Oh, God, really? Okay, no. then I'll do it. Because I know you don't want to, you can't categorize it, really, but how would you if you could, I know? I can't, I, I, I can't, I, I can't come up with a buzzword, really. I can, actually. It's, it's the whole is greater than the, the sum of its parts. I mean, you know, a lot of times, and, and, you know, going back to where the whole band came from, you know, I was, maybe four years ago, I was at the ZMR Music Awards down in New Orleans, which is the zone musical a reporter that tracks uh, our type of music and for airplay and charting, and they have an award show kind of a thing. And I'm sitting there, and I was actually there to, um, um, one of the things, uh, Lawrence Blatt, who's the guitarist in Flow, he's the, uh, the L in Flow, um, wanted me to accept if he, if he won, to accept an award for him. And he sends me a text while I'm sitting there saying, listen, I have this idea. I want to make a band with you and me and Fiona. And I guess one thing I'll introduce or be, you know, is that you are all people that I had already right. produced I mean, right. individually. Exactly. So that was the, the common thread was, you know, and that's how I, I actually I met both Fiona and Lawrence was I was hired by Will to be the flugelhorn player or the horn player on Fiona's music and Lawrence's music well before this. And so the three of us at all, well, I, I don't know that Fiona has, no. I was, I'm sort of like the, the house flugelhorn guy at, at Imaginary Road with Will's studio, you know. So Lawrence said, let's make this band and we'll have Will produce it. And I'm like, okay. You know, and Lawrence wanted to make the whole thing happen. So we started to do that. And then he, you know, we started to invite, and then Lawrence in the end invited Will to join us. And, and so it became this, this uh, the uh, four individual artists that got together, this is like well, maybe last year or two years ago when we first made the first uh, album. And it was one of those moments where instead of it becoming a, um, 
like a compilation album, like here's a Fiona song with uh, the other three people on it and vice versa, you know, all around. It actually had a sound of its own. It actually, the four of us m made its own flow sound, you know, the sound of this band. And it was, it was pleasantly surprising. And Were you pleasantly surprised because it was actually really, really good? Well, I always felt, knowing the talent that we are, right. um, that, it, that, that the potential certainly was there for it to be. You're like the Avengers. All four of you came together. <laughs> I like that. To I like create that. I like nice. something amazing for the good of the planet. The, the, well, I think the first record, I, I think it was wonderfully successful, but I think it still maintained our, it, it, not in a negative sense, but it, it was very much my song and, and everybody sort of sprinkled some fairy dust on it and the rest of it, but it was still essentially mine. And I think what really happened with this, after all the time that we've been recording previously and playing together and the rest of it, is that it created its own DNA, ultimately. It, it, I think you, it's, it would be very hard to tease apart whose element is, is within the song. It's, it's, it really is a synthesis of the four of us. Um, so I think that was the, the maturation of, of, you know, this new record. Let's mention the other members of, of the band. Mm -hmm. Once again, I know you just mentioned the third. Let's mention the other. The well, there's other. Fiona Joy Hawkins. Mm -hmm. She's a um, very well-established and creative uh, Australian pianist. Mm -hmm. um, there's Lawrence Blatt, who's an uh, uh, acoustic guitar uh, artist, uh, done um, four or five albums, maybe more. Uh, um, a lot of them produced by Will, or almost all of them. Um, I'm Jeff Oster, you know, trumpet flugelhorn player. I've been six or seven albums out, and many of them produced by Mr. Ackerman. And then there's uh, Will There's Ackerman. you. That's you, right. sir. That guy. Will Ackerman. Grammy Award winner. Grammy Award winner. Yes, he is. Okay, so in a couple of days, you're going to take these amazing individual talents and blend them all together for the benefit of a really cool show happening at the Next Stage Arts Project. It's happening Wednesday. Get all the details at nextstagearts.org, nextstagearts.org. Come check out Will Ackerman and Flo. It's going to be a great show. Will, had you ever been in a band before prior to Flo? Never. And Jeff, how about you? Many. Many. Yes, yeah. it's almost the opposite, which is actually quite true about a lot of things with me and Will. But yes, yeah, many. And I have another challenging question. If you could have one more member in the band flow, and you could pick any musician in the world, who would it be, Will? Cool. Martin Offler. Nice. How about you, Jeff? Wow. Um, um, you want to come back? You want to phone a friend on that one? Come back? You know, when I first came to my mind was actually a guy that's in the band, Tom Eaton. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, oh, Tom, yeah there you Tom go. That, that, that's who I... I, I we have in the band. He's obviously he's very responsible for a lot of what happens with this with this band to flow. There you and go. He's a co-producer of the music and a great guy. And, yeah, he uh, and I've worked together yeah. as a team for a billion years now. Oh yeah, it's awesome. So check out Flow. I don't think Mark Knopfler is going to be there, but that's okay because well, I thought we, you could arrange that. I'll uh, <laughs> yeah, you promised. Uh, yeah, you know, I'll phone up his brother Dave. Remember, Dave was in the band for a while back uh, back in the day. But um, thank you to Will Ackerman. Thank you, Jeff Oster. Again, yes, the sir. show is this Wednesday night. A pleasure. I could just keep going for about twenty five minutes. Fine with me. But um, we appreciate so you guys coming down at an early time. All right. Yes. Next thank Stage you. Arts. NextStageArts.org. That's where you can get information and tickets for Wednesday's show.